Hi, I'm a nostalgic millennial, and before we get into the review proper today, there's something I'd like to address. So last month, I tried to upload a video talking about the edits four kids made to the first episode of Pokemon. I figured, considering I mostly just do movie reviews, I thought it'd be cool to branch out in new directions. However, pretty much immediately after I uploaded it, it was blocked in all countries. I tried disputing the copyright claims to no avail. I then tried re-editing and re-uploading the stupid thing twice, but I got the same results, so I just deleted all three videos. For those of you who are wondering, that's why there was seemingly no new upload last month. Yeah, I'm trying to have a monthly uploading schedule in case you couldn't tell. Anyway, I may try re-uploading the video again if I can find a way to get past YouTube's terrible copyright system, but I have no idea when that'll be, if ever. Alright, now with that out of the way, let's get into what we're reviewing today. I'm sure at least a few of you are familiar with the Buddies movies. For those of you who aren't, the series initially started with 2006's Air Buddies, a spin-off of the Air Bud movies, except this time starring multiple Golden Retriever puppies instead of just one fully grown one. Oh, and they can talk too now for some reason. Air Buddies spawned several sequels over the years, the last of which being 2013's Super Buddies. But considering the series started in the 2000s, it only makes sense that I would eventually get around to reviewing one of them. And since it's December, I might as well review the Christmas-themed one, 2009's Santa Buddies. This movie is basically exactly what you think it is. It's a cheap direct-to-DVD 2000s kids movie, nothing more. I'll admit I haven't really seen many of the other Buddies movies, or really any of the Air Bud franchise for that matter. Yeah, shocker, I know. I mean, I think I saw part of one of them at one point as a kid, but I don't really remember anything about it. Basically what I'm trying to say is I'm not really familiar with this series at all, but guys, I mean, come on, it's Santa Buddies. You basically get what you expect here. Our movie begins with Santa and a dog walking through a terrible green screen background. I mean the North Pole. Yeah, guys, the effects in this movie are really bad. I mean, I know it's a cheap direct-to-DVD movie and all, but still. If the great Christmas icicle continues to melt at this rate, Christmas magic stored in the ice crystal will vanish. Well, I'm gonna have to look at that for the next hour and a half. God, I hate this job sometimes. Santa and the dog, who we find out is named Santa Paws, yeah, it's that kind of movie, walk into a cave and see a melting icicle. Those children and their pets just don't believe like they used to. Yeah, this movie suffers from the same plot hole that a lot of other movies about Santa Claus do, and by extension, also things like The Tooth Fairy or The Easter Bunny. Heck, even a lot of good movies suffer from this plot hole. Often you'll have a situation where Santa, or what have you, exists, but nobody believes in him. But if that's the case, then where do the parents think that all the presents come from? Anyway, apparently, if this icicle finishes melting, then Christmas magic will vanish, whatever that means. I understand the true meaning of Christmas. Because I've never heard that phrase used in a Christmas movie before. We then see Santa Paws' son, Puppy Paws, riding Santa's sleigh. Puppy Paws is all like, I wanna go again, but then this creepy CG reindeer is like, no, we're tired. And then Puppy Paws goes inside Santa's workshop and flips some switch that makes everything go wrong, and then Santa Paws is all like, son, if you are to become my successor, you can't do things like that. But then Puppy Paws is all like, I don't wanna be your successor, I just wanna be normal. Oh, you'd better believe I'm gonna be bringing that up later. We then cut to the titular buddies, all of whose personalities can be summed up in four words or less. There's Butterball, whose personality is likes eating, Rosebud, whose personality is girl, Mudbud, whose personality is says dude a lot, Buddha, whose personality is spiritual, and B-Dog, whose personality is uses hip-hop slang. We're then briefly introduced to the movie's villain, a dog catcher named Crooge, subtle, played by Christopher Lloyd, who is way too good for this movie. We then cut to Claws and Paws looking at the naughty list. There, they find that Butterball ate an entire turkey by himself because, like I said, there's basically nothing to his character outside of the fact that he likes eating. After they've both left, Puppy Paws sees the open page and reads all about Butterball and all his friends. He then decides to go visit them in order to learn how to be a normal puppy. Totally not contrived at all. He then rips the page out for some reason and walks away. We then see the way in which Santa collects his mail. He has an elf named Eli travel around the world in a mail truck that changes depending on where he is in the world. And of course, its default form is America. 
Come to think of it, considering the actual Saint Nicholas was born in what's now Turkey, they shouldn't be speaking English at all. So then Eli just straight up portals to the town where the buddies live in broad friggin' daylight. If they can just do stuff like that out in the open, then why does nobody believe in Santa? Oh, and then we see that puppy paw snuck on board. Big surprise, I know. Cut back to Santa's workshop, and apparently the North Pole is melting due to lack of Christmas magic or whatever. Another week. I hate to even say it, but I think the North Pole is starting to melt. Come on, guys, don't get political. I'm just kidding, of course. No, the actual point of this scene is that Santa and crew notice that Puppy Paws is missing. Not really sure why it took him this long to notice, but whatever. Eli portals back to the North Pole because apparently the truck is broken due to lack of Christmas spirit or whatever, I don't even care. Back in Who Caresville, Puppy Paws goes to a police dog named Sniffer and asks where Butterball lives, and he gives him the directions. Apparently, Butterball lives in a huge mansion where they have servants put up the Christmas lights. Puppy Paws gets in a bucket for no reason, and some guy somehow doesn't notice him and puts some Christmas lights in there. They lift him up onto the roof, and oh hi, obvious green screen. Puppy Paws then enters through the chimney. Why, why would you go into the chimney? Like, yeah, I get it, Santa Claus and everything, but what if the fireplace had been lit, you moron? <sighs> so Puppy Paws enters through the chimney, and oh look, terrible CG. Haven't seen enough of that in this movie. God, this movie's so cheap they don't even bother to animate the two of them colliding. They just show a black screen. Butterball is flabbergasted, which is perfectly understandable, and Puppy Paws tries to explain who he is and where he comes from, which Butterball doesn't believe. Again, perfectly understandable. Except that suddenly he starts believing him once he tells him he can get off the naughty list if he shows him how to be a quote-unquote regular puppy. There's no reason for it, he just randomly believes him now. Butterball shows him, quote, the most magical room in the house, unquote, by which he of course means the kitchen. Get it? Cause he likes eating! <laughs> Puppy Paws accidentally knocks over some cookies, but apparently he has some magical thingy around his neck that can turn stuff Christmassy. Alright, sure, why not? Puppy Paws eats all the cookies, and Butterball gets blamed for it. Wah wah. Cut to the other buddies having a meeting in a forest. I guess that's a thing they do? And they wonder why Butterball is late. Puppy Paws is all like, I just wanna be a normal puppy! So they all try to show him, but he ends up getting all of them in trouble, and they all end up hating him. Afterwards, Rosebud is all like, hey, let's play hide and seek, and asks Puppy Paws to count to 12. And in case you're wondering why she chose such an oddly specific number, it's for the sake of an extremely forced joke. You're killing me! Santa buddies. You really are. So Puppy Paws finds them almost immediately. He overhears them talking trash about him and gets all disappointed. They eventually realize that they acted like jerks to him, but of course only after he leaves. Just then, Crooge catches Puppy Paws. Wait, don't dog catchers, like, only catch strays? Why would he catch Puppy Paws considering he clearly has a collar on? At the pound, Puppy Paws meets Tiny, another dog, and they have a conversation about how apparently nobody cares about Christmas anymore or something. Okay, this movie is really trying to hammer in the whole no one cares about Christmas anymore thing, but we haven't actually seen any evidence of it. Heck, if anything, we have the opposite problem, considering everybody gets ready for Christmas in October now. Every night I look up. Wait, what? What? Really? We're, we're singing now? Like, we're singing right in the middle of this non-musical. Oh my god, and there's a friggin' montage. You absolutely cannot get cornier than this. Well, at the very least, things are getting pretty serious, so we must be nearing the end, right? Proceed. So, back at Santa's workshop, some elves try to fix Eli's mail truck thing, and Eli finds the page that Puppy Paws ripped out of the naughty list, 
And I guess that alone is enough for him to figure out that Puppy Paw snuck onto the truck. So Eli and some dog named Eddie leave to go find him. We then cut to the buddies having yet another forest meeting, again wondering where Butterball is, when suddenly he arrives along with Eddie. Wait, what? Did I, like, miss a scene or something? Yeah, apparently these two met off-screen for some reason? I'm not really sure why they decided not to just show us them meeting. Anyway, he tells them he needs help finding Puppy Paws, and the buddies are all happy to help, but none of them actually know where he is. Just then, Cruz's truck appears, and the buddies all hide. Rosebud realizes that maybe he's in the pound, so they all decide to follow the truck. So they decided to follow the truck that just so happened to appear at exactly the right moment, based on a suspicion that Rosebud had, by some cosmic coincidence, ends up being right, and furthermore, a bunch of puppies are able to keep up with the truck. Makes sense. Eli, after trying and failing to get the truck to start, comes across one of those sit on Santa's lap things, and of course someone there thinks that he's just an employee. I'm all for slacking off, but I've been busting my hump over here, and you've been standing over here just hiding out, so... Get it? Cause he's an actual elf! <laughs> so Eli just straight up tells the guy that he's trying to get the fake plastic sleigh to fly so he can get puppy paws back to the North Pole. Are you trying to get locked up in an insane asylum? Cut back to the buddies at the pound, which they're all able to get into thanks to a rather convenient puppy-sized hole in the wall. Once inside, Butterball is put on lookout, Buddha, Eddie, and Rosebud go to find Puppy Paws, and Mudbud and B-Dog are sent to find the key to his cell. Puppy Paws is, of course, found almost immediately. Hey, I'm so happy to see you. I'm so sorry I messed everything up. From now on, I promise to be good for goodness sake. Oh, good, he's learned his lesson. That means the movie's almost over, right? You know, sometimes I wonder why I even ask these questions. Buddha and B-Dog weren't able to find the key, but they were able to find Puppy Paws' collar, which he then uses to escape. Wait, what? I thought we established earlier that the collar could only turn stuff Christmassy. Now it can open locks, too? The dogs all escape, and Eddie bites Scrooge for good measure. Eddie runs up to Eli like, we gotta go now! How exactly did they know where to find him? They decide to use Puppy Paws' collar to make the plastic sleigh fly, and the buddies will take the place of reindeer, and oh look, more terrible special effects, what a surprise. We cut back to that cave with the Christmas spirit icicle thingy from earlier, and apparently it's been restored. I assume it's because a whole bunch of people saw the sleigh? I don't know, the movie's not really clear about that, but at the very least, the main conflict has been resolved, so that means the movie's almost over, right? Oh wait, let me guess, there's gonna be some text on screen proving me wrong. Yep, there it is. After the buddies crash land at the North Pole, they go inside to meet Santa Claus and Paws, and, uh... Well... Remember that thing earlier that I said I'd be bringing up again? Well... Basically, Puppy Paws quote-unquote learns his lesson and realizes that he now wants to be Santa Paws' successor like he supposedly should have all along. So basically, the message of the movie is that you have to stick with the career path your parents choose for you. That's a great message to be sending kids! So apparently the reindeer can't fly the sleigh, I guess because they're like sick or something? I, I don't know, the movie's not exactly clear on this point. Whatever, it doesn't matter. It's all just an excuse to have the buddies fly the slice some more anyway. Oh, and B-Dog's nose turns red, and they call him Rudog. Honestly, I'm not even surprised the movie went there. We then get a montage of the buddies delivering presents to various bad green screen backgrounds, and oh my god, this feels so much longer than an hour and a half. Afterwards, they all go back to their owners, and blah blah blah, I don't care at the end. So that was Santa Buddies, and yeah, it's bad, but it's basically exactly what I expected it to be. Yeah, like I said at the beginning, you pretty much get what you expect with this one. The writing, acting, story, special effects, and especially the message are subpar at best and god-awful at worst. This is not a good movie. Like, at all. But come on, it's friggin' Santa Buddies. Nobody's really expecting a direct-to-DVD kids movie to be any good. And yeah, I know I got pretty angry at Mulan too, but the difference is that that movie was even worse than I expected it to be, plus that was at least the sequel to a pretty good movie. This, is, on the other hand, is exactly how, how I expected it to be, and it's not even really tied to that good a franchise. I'd say skip this one, but you were probably going to already. Well, that about does it for this year's reviews. Lord only knows what 2018 will bring for this channel, 
But until then, I'm a nostalgic millennial, and Merry Christmas, everybody. Yo, BFF and dudes. That sounds like mad gnarly fun for shizzle. Namaste. He's making the list, he's checking it twice, he's gonna find out who's naughty or nice. So yeah, guys, the effects in this movie are really bad. I mean, yeah, I know it's a dirt. Wait, what? Why would you enter through the chimney? I mean, yeah, I get it, Santa Claus and everything, but what if it had been on... Wait, what? Why are you going through the fireplace? Mm -hmm. Wait, what? Why would you go in through the chimney? Like, yeah, I get it, Santa Claus and everything, but what if it had been lit, you dumb... So they... <coughs> but wait, don't... Don't dog... Well, at the very least, things are nearing... Well, that about does it for this year's reviews. Lord only knows what 2018 will bring...